ups and downs. <laughs> There's way more uphill sections than I thought. It's not my motivation, it's just pure resolve. I haven't had this much pain in my legs ever. Oh, nearly there now, nearly there. It's Saturday, the 13th of February 2021. I've just signed up for the London Marathon. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but I have about eight months to figure it all out. Back in September of 2020, I just started working as a junior doctor. It was the first few months of the job. Everything was new, scary, exciting, and exhausting. During that same time, the gyms were closed because of COVID, and I thought this was the best opportunity to start running. My goal was to run five kilometers. That's it. It was to run five kilometers without having constant migraines and feeling like it was the hardest thing I'd done in the world. And that's how it started. In the month of September, I didn't actually get to run a five kilometer run. I never got up to that point. But by November, the first time that I run an eight kilometer uh, distance was such a big deal for me. It was a massive achievement and I couldn't actually believe that I'd done it. And I remember thinking at that point, wouldn't it be funny if I managed to run a marathon? Um, and it was almost, a joke in my head although I knew that it was theoretically physically possible it was one of those things that I thought I would never actually get around to doing I had already gone on the marathon website and looked at the ballot which was already done for this year um, and the different charities that were offering places for people again all of those as far as I knew had already been taken up and there were amazing charities that you could run for but I essentially just saw that it was a too late and I thought, well, you know, that's decided, I guess. I don't have to make a decision about it. One day I will run a marathon. And I just left it at that. And then in February, one evening, I was just scrolling on Facebook and I saw a post by Refugee Action, which is a charity that was offering a position for a spot in the London Marathon. And it almost felt unreal because for me, all the doors had been closed at least that year for me to be able to run the London Marathon. So I hesitated clicking on it and even applying for it, but I thought, let me not make a decision about whether I want to commit to running a marathon. Let me just apply. And if I get the spot, then I can decide whether or not I'll do it. That felt like a smart choice for me because it was a small commitment. It wasn't a commitment to do a marathon. It was a commitment to apply to maybe do a marathon. So that's what I ended up doing. And the rest is history. I trained for about eight months. I went through multiple different plans, not really knowing what I was doing. But as a general theme, my motto in training was not to over obsess over everything and trying to understand how to do all aspects of my training perfectly, whether it be nutrition or stretching. I knew that if I tried to do things perfectly, I just wouldn't do them at all. So I told myself I'd figure it out as I went along and to just listen to my body and felt what I thought was right at the time. That was both a good and bad idea. More on that later, but let me take you to Sunday, October 3rd, the London Marathon. So we're at 13 kilometers and at this point in the race I'm already knackered and it's the thought as well of having about 30 kilometers left to run that is really not great for motivation. So I had a few different boosters that I had with me to help me keep running including messages that my family had recorded and sent to listen on the day during the marathon as well as some motivational audiobooks. So that helped me keep going but I did hit a wall very early on. Oh, 
15 kilometers in. Almost halfway. Ups and downs. This was one of the hardest parts of the run at 22 kilometers in. I'd never done more than 21 kilometers and it's the point where you've just gone through Tower Bridge. There's an amazing crowd, amazing energy. You feel great, it's beautiful and you continue running and that's when you see on the other side of the road runners heading to the finish line and they probably have around seven kilometers left and you've got 25 kilometers. And that is a really big blow as well. So at that point when I started walking to have my energy gel, the pain in my legs was so bad, I thought I wouldn't physically be able to continue running. It was very low on motivation. I was getting all sorts of nerve pains in my ankles and my knees. The voice notes from my family definitely helped. And at some point I just told myself, run for five more minutes and see how you feel afterwards. And I started running again and I realized that actually the pain was much worse walking than running. Um, it's almost as if as soon as you start resting a bit, everything that hurts just pops up. stop moving. It helps to think of one person I'm running for every kilometer. About 10 kilometers to go. body anymore. It's not my motivation, it's just pure resolve to finish this. 36 kilometers in. Well done, everyone. It's almost more painful walking because you realize how much in pain your body is. this much pain in my legs ever and I'm trying not to cry but I have 400 meters left well done Sean's doing alright Dom tired did you hear that Dom tired he didn't say that honest well done Steve well done Hannah and Jake come on guys I'm just looking stronger than you, Jacob. I just want to put that out there. Come on, nearly there now. Nearly there. What a long way. 26.2 miles. The London Marathon, the 41st ever London Marathon. Because we couldn't do it last year. It's all virtual. We're back on the road. We're going to be back in October next year for those who are interested. 2nd of October. And then after that, we'll be moving hopefully back to uh, April time. The next year is going to be back in October. The ballots are open. If you're inspired and you want to start training now, the ballot is open for training and you can get yourself into the ballot. <laughs> I'm done. 
run is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. I'm probably never gonna do another one. It's day two post-marathon and I just wanted to give an update on how you might feel if you decide to run a marathon. This is obviously my experience and thankfully I haven't had any ripped off toenails or horrible chafing incidents but I definitely have a lot of pain in my legs. Yesterday I thought that I'd escaped the worst of it and that it wasn't actually too bad, but day two is actually worse, much worse. Even my arms hurt from holding up my phone and carrying a water bottle. So it, yeah, it's, it's very, very painful. But to be honest, the worst pain that I had was the migraine in the last hour of the marathon. My head was pulsing and there was so much sound and people screaming and music. And that on top of the dehydration, sun, physical exertion, meant that I was gonna get a migraine. To be fair, I used to have migraines after a five kilometer run. On Sunday, I told my family, I'm never doing this again. I do not have the feeling of, oh, this was the best day of my life. I wanna do one every year. Now that the migraine's worn off and I'm starting to realize that I've actually run a marathon, I think I would want to run another one, maybe in some sort of faraway future. I'm just incredibly grateful that I was able to complete the run even with an injured foot, which will be another story. I'm so thankful for my family and my friends who were so supportive and who helped me raise an incredible amount of money for refugee action. And I have so much respect for endurance athletes. It takes so much of you to continue despite everything telling you to stop, despite your body and your mind just telling you enough is enough. I think the best feeling for me out of all of this and the most important reminder is really about the idea of your own limitations. We all have um, a notion of how much we can do, how far we can go. And during the race at multiple times, I felt like I'd reached that point. I'd reached that wall where I couldn't go any longer and I would physically not be able to push ahead. And somehow I still managed to do it. And it's physically being able to live this experience of pushing past your conceived boundaries of yourself. And I think that's why people do crazy things like run marathons and ultra marathons. You push through so many preconceived physical and emotional and psychological barriers and you learn to see yourself differently. You learn to see boundaries as transient progressions and things that you need to work through. And I'm not saying that everything is possible. Of course, we all have limitations, but more often than not, I think at the point you want to give up, there's always something left in the tank. And that's what running a marathon made me experience. So if you have a niggling feeling for something in your life that you want to do, but you're worried you won't be able to, I hope you're able to use this as another example of something that is entirely plausible um, with a little planning and a little hope. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.